gone through mine yeah. without one scratch. Mm-hmm. And it, we both stopped our cars, got out and looked at each other, and just, like, drove away. <laughs> yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've started collecting stories like this the past couple of years. I didn't used to believe it either. Um, it was probably Richard Bartlett and his Matrix Energetics Mm -hmm. got me thinking about this because he has the theory that we have these various possible parallel realities and we can shift from one to the other as a way of healing. And I realized when I heard that that this was consistent with my synchronized universe model. It's exactly the same model. Um, And so for the first time I said, well, then maybe it's real. And I've I've talked to shamans, and I've been talking to various kinds of healers, and this thing happens more than you'd ever think. Um, and, and in each in the kahunas of Hawaii, you know, traditional healers there, uh, for them, this is the normal way they heal. They, they often heal bones, for example, broken bones, instantaneously. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I used to, years ago, study hands-on healing as much as I could. I was obsessed with it. And, I mean, I came away with the conclusion that if you understand it, if you know how to get into the groove with it, you can do remarkable things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's out there. It is, as you say, a life force. Uh, And it's and it's and it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's that's the strange thing. I mean, if, if we just assume that life continues with cause and effect in normal Western physics and our consciousness stays focused on this one reality, then these things don't happen. But if we are able to shift into a an altered state, if you like, a state where all these possibilities, you don't focus on one possibility, but you allow them all to be present, it, these things seem to happen fairly frequently. And that state is the state where you create the special energy that we call chi or prana or the life force. That, that's what's present, or subtle energy. That's what's present when we enter these altered states, and that's where the physics laws all of a sudden become like Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so that, that's, that's the exciting part to me. Let's get into some of the topics that you cover in the uh, life force. Okay. Go ahead. The, uh, the chi, explain that. Well, of course, I, as, as you know and the listeners know, uh, chi is something that in... Uh, Oriental medicine is something very familiar. Uh, They talk about it as the life force there, and it's been around for thousands of years. It's part of their standard medicine, but in Western physics, we would say it doesn't exist, and we don't have a way to describe what it is. Um, What I have been doing in this book is trying to figure out what it is and, and put it in a context where Western science can understand it, and I can say it in about three or four sentences, uh, probably. Um, Essentially, there are two polarities, two types of this energy. And um, one tends to push time forward. One tends to slow it down and pull it back. One tends to increase entropy, which is a tendency toward randomness. One tends to work the other way, to neg entropy, to building, to creating structures. And that's one of the reasons why humans are so efficient. So these two different forms of energy are both present, and uh, they are qualities of the vacuum. We talk about you know, the vacuum energy of space, the zero-point energy. Uh, what we now know is that that energy has a structure to it. It's not just random and amorphous. There are, there are aspects and forms that occur in that vacuum that are very special, and that's where the chi occurs, and there's these two types, the, the Russians would say the right-handed spin uh, energy, which they call torsion, is the part that tends to decrease entropy, tends to uh, help structures to build, like in our proteins and our metabolism. The other structure tends to speed things up and uh, tends to go the other way. So um, in a nutshell, that's, um, that's <laughs> at least one piece of One that. piece of many. Yeah. I mean. I, 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 the, the cartoon that I put in the book, you know, of the six blind scientists and the elephant tries to illustrate this point because subtle energy or chi occurs in many different forms. It affects every other physical 
process, every other physical force. And so if you are a scientist looking at this from one lens or one perspective, you'll say it's a wall or it's a tree trunk or it's a rope. You know, you won't see the whole picture. That's, that's been one of the difficulties with a fully appreciating of this energy. As a scientist, Claude, I'm, I'm fascinated by your thoughts of quantum consciousness as well. I bet when you were going to MIT and Princeton, you didn't think about that. No, that's right. The, 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 the funny thing about our Western mindset, and I assume it's still the same today, is it's kind of mechanical. You know, you focus on the machines and you have your equations and you kind of think that the world follows these rules and the human mind is just sort of this kind of messy thing that you want to pretend is not there, not important. And uh, now we're entering a realm where we find that when consciousness and these energies or subtle energies are present, they can be the dominant effect. And, for example, Bill Tiller has described experiments where he builds up this energy in his lab to high levels. And uh, all someone has to do is, is take some data or, or just go in with a, with a bad mood, and it messes up all the uh, results. So we're living in a time now where the human being is part of the experiment. What made you decide to go for it? And, and go with this book, Life Force, at this time? Um, I think the biggest thing is that when my first book, uh, Synchronized Universe, came out, as you know, it has a lot of uh, examples of different types of paranormal phenomena. It was sort of best evidence for these different things. And every one of them uh, pretty much violates Western physics. Um, but as a, as a scientist, that to me is just a starting point. That's not the ending. I wanted to understand how we can make a science out of this, how we can integrate all these examples into a new science which can explain these phenomena. Also, I have a lot of dear friends in Colorado who belong to an organization called ICEM, which stands for International Society for the Study of Subtle Energy and Energy Medicine. It's basically subtle energy. And a lot of them are scientists. A lot of them are very interested in these uh, subjects, too. A lot of them are healers. And every energy healer has the same... He works with the same energy, the same chi energy, but a lot of them, I mean, it was, we have no science to explain what this stuff is or how it's possible for an energy healer to affect someone, to heal somebody thousands of miles away. And yet we have lots of evidence that they do. So a lot of these people are very curious about how this stuff works. So that's been part of my uh, encouragement. Did you do any work into how uh, Adam, he's been on the program before, the, the, he was a kid, he's not a little kid anymore, Right. but uh, he has the ability to heal that way. I, I, I know of Adam, I, I have his books, I haven't done any specific research on him. Um, I've been, I have been working with uh, Qigong masters and uh, other healers like that that, that that do work where you can measure their effects, but I have not met Adam or talk to him personally. A remarkable young man, Claude. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do that. Truly remarkable indeed. Yeah. In, in your work, The Life Force, you, you've talked about uh, painting a picture of our existence, of, of what you call the secret of life. Mm -hmm. Have you found that secret? Um, at, at a certain level, I have. I mean, I'm sure the reason I avoided the title is that I think that we exist on many levels, and I talk about that in the book. Um, and um, if the theosophists would say um, there is the, the astral dimension and the, the mental and the causal, but each, each aspect of our personality and of our activity has its own dimension, its own level of reality. Uh, in the same way that in the synchronized universe, you can have parallel realities, but then there are also these higher levels uh, where consciousness takes on different aspects. And so um, there's a limit to how far I can see. And so I'm looking at the what I would call the physical, the etheric, and the astral, which is the emotional uh, parts that most healers uh, work with. Uh, so uh, so that, that's my limitation. But within that, I found that there's a great deal that's been discovered the past 20 or 30 years. Uh, for example, um, Fritz Albert Pops work in Germany with biophotons. Uh, he's proven that the DNA... Uh, creates biophotons and also receives biophotons, little packets of light that pass through the body and that basically uh, enable the DNA to communicate and to control the physical processes within the body. What's more interesting is 
that this light is coherent. It acts like laser light. So it creates a, a hologram within the body. It's, uh, it's like a, a hologram that's a pattern, a blueprint of how the organs are supposed to be growing. And the acupuncture meridians are these very important channels that most Western scientists don't know much about. But in Eastern Europe, they've discovered they're actually waveguides for millimeter waves, as well as a few other things. Uh, they, um, the, uh, the Korean scientists have been able to photograph them and show that they also carry um, stem cells, stem cells that move. And as you know, stem cells, whenever they, they can turn into whatever type of tissue is needed. So they're really, really important for healing. Uh, the most important part that uh, I, I won't say I've discovered, but um, at least in the, at least among Western writers, there aren't people talking about this, is is the torsion field, which is the Russian name for this subtle energy, and um, it exists even when electromagnetic energy is absent. Uh, for example, these biophotons, uh, every time you make one, the DNA makes one, it also makes a torsion wave. Um, outside the body, um, most of the electromagnetic energy is kept inside the body, but outside the body is this torsion field, and that is what makes up the aura. And so we now have an answer to this long-standing question about the aura. What is it? It, it is basically it's a coherent holographic field of torsion waves. And what is long-range healing? That's when an energy healer takes that torsion field and sends it and interacts with the mm-hmm. torsion field of the client. Perfect. The he- so that doesn't take the energy that biophotons would, but it still carries the, the information. He or she knows how to move through that field and make it work for the victim, I guess, or the patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there have been a lot of events I go to, and there are always people there who take photographs of your auras. I have not done that yet. I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, I mean, I would just really like to see that. They can tell by colors and everything. But those practitioners, those healers, uh, they can sense the aura, see the aura. I'll tell you a story when we come back from the break about Edgar Casey mm-hmm. and if they see breaks in it, Claude, they know that somebody's ill or sick. Absolutely. I mean, it's truly remarkable. Uh, where do people pick up the, this book, Life Force? Uh, right now, the best place is um, Amazon.com or go to my website, SynchronizedUniverse.com, and you'll find several links there. If you click on one of those links, it'll take you right to it. Uh, the, unfortunately, Life Force, the name, is not all that unique. There are many other books also with those words in the title. So it's easier to go to my website, and I'll take you to the correct one. Uh, if you search on Amazon, it may, you may end up in the wrong spot. As long as they put in your name, Claude Swanson, <laughs> they'll get it. That should get more, it. More to come. We'll talk about auras. We'll talk about Edgar Casey. We'll talk about the Princeton Pear Lab, and that stood for, of course, Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research. I believe it's closed now. We'll be back. <laughs> 